He said I should go. He said I would like it there. He said that the lifestyle was crazy a lot. He said, and you know, there is such a freedom there. I said, well, I'm happy with what I have got because you know I've got my own way, mister, in my head. Well, if that's so, it must be a good way, sister. He said, he said, come with me. He said, let's have fun today. I got away from my place on the shelf. He said, me. We're going to open with a tune that was written by Zoot Sims called Zootcase. Talked. We had a lot of fun. I liked him. 
And then a little while later, he asked me to come upstairs with him to Basin Street. He wanted to see the singer who was up there. When the gig was finished, he had a party to go to. Well, I had my bike. I also had a child back home, so I couldn't go there. Give me your address, he said. I'll come over later. Right. I thought to myself, that's the last I'll ever see of him. But I gave it to him anyway. And when I got home, I slept in the front parlor, very close to the door, just in case. 3 a.m. Bing bong. Just like the Avon lady was arriving. But it sure wasn't her. No, Mr. Simmons came in the house. Put his shoes very neatly in the front hallway. The next day, one of my boarders said to me, Who left the daddy's shoes there last night? They were there in the morning. They all wore sneakers or sandals. But then that evening, when he came in, shoes there, so it then followed me into the back of the house where my room was. That's the beginning of our story. But you know, I'm going to let the music tell you the story. He was such a music man. And besides, I owe him a song or two. I'll tell you about that in a little while. But in the meantime, let's just all go back to 1976, to Bourbon Street. In the bar, you were a star. A play on stage But I was alone I was unknown It was a difficult age I never dreamed That in between sets That you would come And talk to me But they were They were I didn't know what was to be You played gentlemen looked so straight to me. He unleashed an explosion of passion and sensuality that I had never experienced before. He was all of his music and more. Sweet, sexy, and hard swinging. I was very surprised. Mind you, I think he was surprised too because underneath all the totally enveloping and baggy clothes that I always wore then, there was a hot mama that I had kept hidden, even from myself. I had been hiding for most of my 30 years. But Zoot, he demanded to be met. So I met him.
I've got a brand new lover He made signs to me And when he looked my way I felt that he could see The winding twists and turns That make the road within my heart And he would travel in there Oh, he traveled in my heart, all right. He woke up my heart. I told my best friend that I'd met a new man. She said, what's he like? I said, Strange, but that's what I felt. Well, Zoot phoned me on the very last day of the gig, three in the morning again, and he said he was going to be leaving Toronto. And then he added, I love you, babe. That was when he got me. And then he was gone, back to New York, where he lived, and back on the road, because he was a working musician. And I just had to wait until the next time he came to Toronto. I didn't know if I was going to see him again or when, but I had to keep the road within my heart open. Waiting for you, baby. Thinking about you, baby. Yes, thinking about you, baby. How much I'm really missing all your baby love. All your wonderful baby love. You got a way that is crazy. Just a slap and smooth and lazy with your big love. Your wonderful big love. Well, now your music's jumping. My heart is pumping. Cause you're whipping up a frenzy full of fire. Oh, yeah, your tune is calling and my heart is falling. There's no one in this world that's got your big love. Your wonderful big love. Well, take me. Take me where you're going, baby. I need you. When your heart is showing, baby, what you do? Good God, away about you, baby. I can't live without you. Something about your sweet smile. Why you keep me humming when you move on?
I just had to wait. So I waited. I got my heart all calmed down and back into its routine. So after Zoot, I got back to my regular life. But after Zoot, my life had really changed. I missed him. Sometimes I would miss him so much, I felt like my heart was hijacked. Out of the blue, thinking of you, haunting me all through my day. studying, I was at home reading or writing. I like to write poetry. I also wrote in my journals, which I've been keeping since I was 17 years old. And then I had another stack, huge, of dream journals, because I dreamed so much. And I wrote them all down. When I met Sue, he told me he liked to pay attention to his dreams, too. I wrote a song, first song ever, just a couple of weeks after I'd met Sue. And then I was back home fooling around on the piano, and I ended up writing a song about Sue. Didn't have a lot of chord changes. Didn't have hardly any words, really. Because all I was saying was, I love you. I love you, I love you, I love you every day. My heart can't know, it can only say, I love you, I love you, I love you even more. It's a happy, happy day. Yes, I will. 
I was taken, that went right out the window. All the religion too, that was God. I don't even know what I said, it's just humiliating to think about it. But I do know, I did not sing the song. I was too shy. I couldn't open my heart and let that little bird out. Sue was cool, of course. He was fine. He could love me when I couldn't love myself. He was the one that had the good religion. So I missed that opportunity to be open, to tell him how I felt. Pretty soon, the gig was over and it was gone. A few months later, he was back. And then he was gone. And all this back and forth really made it worse for me. Because the more I saw him, the more I cared about him, the more I loved him. Sue had a spirit that was so much bigger than anybody else I knew. And it wasn't because he was famous. I mean, I knew he was well known. And then I went down after I met him, I went to Sam, the record man, looked, saw the records, bought one. But I had no idea of the number of recordings that he'd made. And the people that he'd worked with. Everybody in the jazz world. And the countries that he'd traveled to. I mean, he was known all over the world. I didn't realize that at the time. I just loved him because he was very lovable. And he was spending time with me. Of course, I loved all the crazy good sex we were having, too. But I also liked the simple things that we did. One time we went down to La Scala, the restaurant. They would often have a piano player in the lounge. And they had Jean Denovi there one night. So we went down early so they'd have a chance to visit. So there was Zeus and Jean and Spence, the guy who used to be the taxi driver, and myself. 
and I got all dressed up. Hippie fashion, of course. I had this little camisole on. I used to work part-time in a vintage clothing store. And so I had this thing on. It was actually underwear. But everybody was wearing them as outerwear at the time. So, and it was lovely, deep purple silk from the 30s, a little fragile. So we had just made the introductions all around and I was just backing down into the lovely plush chairs that they had there and that fragile fabric completely gave out in the back, just <laughs> when I was frozen. I mean, these were big guys, right? Not my casual friends. <laughs> I couldn't move. One of the sweetest memories I have of Sue is, is the night when we were back at my place. And I don't know how it came about, but we had gone to bed and he sang to me. That was so lovely. Everything was lovely with Sue when he was there. It was only after he left that all this self-hate come crashing on my head. Because as a child, I was really withdrawn emotionally. I had no confidence at all. My parental model that I had internalized was not entirely healthy. So I got into therapy. But the therapeutic model wasn't a whole lot better. Before I'd met Sue, I had been seeing a psychiatrist, a very reputable doctor from Toronto General Hospital. But he was a man. And when he started getting into the Gestalt therapy, he well, he got his gestalt, a little confused with his gonads. <laughs> <laughs> and he slept with me. Now, these days we hear a lot about that kind of professional abuse. But at that time, we didn't talk about it. Because you had just been dumped on. All the shame that really belongs to the abuser on you. So where do you go? in a world that's so dysfunctional. I only had myself. And as a child, I'd been taught, what you have is what you have. It didn't even occur to me that you could change your life. But by the time I had grown up and got into a little bit of therapy, I did in fact create a friend. A very lovely, beautiful, grown up, of course, woman. Very loving very powerful too. She could do anything. I called her Rhea, and I had her live in the backyard of Havelock Street where I was living. So she was an inspiration for what I could be if I could ever say what I felt. She did finally fire me up to speak, but it was quite a few years later when I finally smartened up and got a woman therapist. But at the time when I knew Zeus, I still couldn't speak. I was really pathetic at the time, emotional. And I know that, but I was trained that way. And it was an era when that's how it was. So I was a woman, I was Catholic, and I was Canadian. And none of those groups were really big on self-esteem or strong identity. We were trained in what I call the RIP training. Repression, introversion, and passivity. And of course, the Catholics have the uh, prayer for the dead, R.I.P., may you rest in peace. Dead. Emotionally. I couldn't even figure out what my feelings were, let alone talk about them, or God forbid, act on them. Until one morning, when Zoot had gone away again, he'd left, and I was upset again, as I always was. But then it occurred to me, I thought, Wait a minute. Sue told me he was flying directly from Toronto to Florida for his next gig. I could get on a plane. I had a piece of card. <laughs> uh, I could go down there. I could just say, surprise! I just had to see you again. I could have sung this song. One day I woke up and I thought just gotta see you again cause you are magic to me you are the one I must see all the things I remember ways I adore moments so tender they make me want more today is a day I promise I will see you again cause you are essential to
simple I seem to forget how you can break my life I was born in the dark till the day we met But you cut through that like a on the bass, Norman Amadio on the piano, and John D. Hunt on the saxophone. See you in about 20 minutes. He said I should go, he said I would like it there He said that the lifestyle was crazy a lot He said, and you know, there is such a freedom there I said...
to me You are the one I must see All the things I remember The ways I adore Moments so tender They make me want more Today is a day I promise I will see you again Cause you are essential to me You show me how I must be Ah, the way that you're warm And I laugh to the brim You're funny and tough sides And sadness within Day after day I'm struggling along 